Hello everyone, I'm Sam. And I'm Erin. And welcome to The, the Tea. tea. <laughs> oh, stop it. We've got some exciting things to share with you lot today. But first, let's give you a rundown of what's happening in today's show. We have Erin here and Connor exploring the German Christmas markets. We have a guest fashionista joining us later on in the show. But Erin, I'm already here, bud. <sighs> Shut up, Sam. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> we'll be showing you how to make some quick and easy Christmas snacks. And we also have a live performance from the Novas. Oh, can't wait. Same, so excited. But first, let's have a look at Danny Howard's incredible story about her kidney transplant and her amazing achievements with the transplant games. I needed a kidney transplant because uh, when I was 29, I wasn't very well and went to the doctors um, and had various tests and that showed that I had um, polycystic kidneys. Um, which is a type of chronic kidney disease. And I was told then that when I was in my 40s or 50s, I would need um, dialysis and a transplant. And when I was 44, I then um, started on dialysis. Living on dialysis is quite a tough thing to go through. I was fairly exhausted and only really felt like I had kind of half a life in a sense in that you know, I managed to go to work, but I was really breathless um, and just found things quite exhausting and, and hard work. Being on the waiting list for a transplant is, is a really strange mixture of feelings. Uh, you're kind of hopeful, but you don't know how long you've got to wait. It could be you know two months, it could be 10 years, it, it might never happen. When I had my transplant, it was just the most amazing feeling. The level of energy that I had, even the next day, it was just incredible to have um, to have my life back um, and to be able to do things again, to be able to go back to work full time, to take up sport, to be a mum and a wife and just to be a normal person. I got into the transplant games through the hospital. It was just a great way of starting to get fit and healthy and it was just great to meet all these different people, to hear their stories and, and the games are just really, really positive because they're all about celebrating life and organ donation. They're also all about raising public awareness. So they go every year to a different city uh, around the UK and um, spend a lot of time in advance of that raising awareness. It's really important that people sign up to the organ donor register because it makes such a difference. There are thousands and thousands of people waiting all the time. I just would want people to really understand the difference it makes. The, the gift that they would be giving to somebody. We want to honour the people who've given us an organ to enable us to carry on leading the full lives that we do. So just please sign up. If you want to sign up to the register, register your details on the NHS organ donation website. It only takes a few minutes. And now... How do you guys get into university of the morning? Public transport. How easy do you find this? Well, how easy do you think it would be if you were in a wheelchair? There are 1.2 million disabled people living in the UK that struggle with doing day-to-day -day things that we take for granted. Here, we take a look at a wheelchair user that faces problems whilst using public transport. My name is Joe Mulhern. I'm 22 years old and I have cerebral palsy, which I was born with. I'm going to talk about the difficulties I face daily whilst traveling due to my disability. Cerebral palsy affects me on a daily basis. It means I have to use a wheelchair 24 hours a day because I can't walk um, unaided. It means I get stiff joints in my, especially in my knees. Um, I've all, it also affects my hands and it affects my fine motor skills. If I was going to use public transport, I'd prefer to use a taxi purely because um, I feel I've got more control over the situation when it does arrive. Um, they, a lot of them have ramps, so I know I'll be able to get in. Um, and also, they use special seat belts and straps to me, so I feel safe while I'm travelling. However, I do have my own car, and I do prefer to use that because I can go when I need to go go out somewhere. Um, I don't have to wait for anything. I feel safe while I'm doing it because obviously I'm I'm sitting in a proper car seat, um, and. I don't have to worry about people being in the way or, 
you know, feeling claustrophobic or stressed. Um, I don't use the bus that often for reasons of um, people can be using the allocated um, wheelchair spaces um, and th that could be somebody who's got a buggy who's a parent and so obviously they can't move so I'd have to get back off the bus and wait for the next one which is just quite inconvenient for me. So I wouldn't use the bus as my main mode of transport really because I'd have to get to the bus stop first which could involve wheeling around a lot beforehand so it depends if it's obviously uphill it'd be quite difficult. Um, and also in rush hour, peak times, like 9 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning, I know that those times are going to be really busy, so it's going to be difficult for me to get on, get on and off the bus with ease, and it's going to make me feel quite stressed. I'd rather not do that on my own because it would be quite stressful for me. I'd rather have somebody with me to help um, sort of move people out of the way and sort of sit with me to sort of hold the wheelchair because that's another thing, buses, they don't have any form of um, sort of restraints or any seat belts to go around the wheelchair and I have to sit in a backwards sort of position as well and the bus moves quite a lot so I don't feel very safe so I'd much rather have somebody with me. I'd say I'd rather there be more spaces on the bus for me to get into so if, some, if, if it's already taken I don't have to get off and wait for the next one. People who are non-wheelchair users should just be a bit more aware when they see somebody getting onto a bus or using any kind of public transport just be aware that they need space and time to get themselves sorted out because it can be quite a stressful uh, situation and if you can see that they need help just go over and ask. To anybody out there who is in a wheelchair just be aware of like, the time that you go out like I wouldn't go out at um, peak times because that is going to be really really busy. There are going to be a lot of people on there and you won't be able to predict if somebody's in um, the allocated spaces. Even if you feel that people are waiting, don't worry. You just concentrate on you and make sure you're, you're OK. Thank you to Joe there for sharing such an important message and we wish him the best of luck. As we all know, Christmas is just around the corner. And do you know what that means? Santa's come in. Yes, but no. Oh. <laughs> the Birmingham German markets are finally back in town. This year, there will be a whopping 93 stores spread around the city centre, and this attracts around 5.5 million visitors each year. That's crazy. It's ridiculous. Now, let's take a look at what myself and Connor got up to at the German Christmas markets. Hi, guys. We're in Birmingham city centre today. We're chilling outside. We've got the Birmingham Christmas market on, so we're going to see what fun me and Eric can get up to. We're now going to go to the sausage stand and try their world famous hot dogs. Yeah, and we're here with Shazir. And he's come to the German market quite a few times. So we're just wondering what's your favourite thing about it? Well, my favourite thing about it is we've got a lot of food here. We can go around with friends and have fun. Something new to see? Yeah. Like that. That's what me and Erin are doing today. So we're going to get back on our journey. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so right now we have Santa with us. And we're just wondering what's your favorite thing about the German market? Well, the, the smells, to be fair. The smells? Yeah, yeah the, the smells are like hot chocolate. Obviously, oh, yeah. I like hot chocolate. So. And carrots for your reindeers. Yeah, and carrots. Well, lovely. Do you want to come on a drinking competition with me and Erin? I'd always be able to do that, yeah. Might be having Santa with the drinking competition later. Thank you, Santa. Yes, you're welcome. So we've been having a look around and we found something special for you, Sam. So we're going to keep looking around again. There's some beer further up the road, so we're going to have a little drink competition and see how that goes. Santa's on the run and we've lost him, but we've still 
stumbled upon the beer stand and we've had a really good time and we've seen so many things and honestly Sam you're gonna love your present. It's great you're gonna love your present. I hope you've all enjoyed seeing what the German market's got to offer. Yeah thank you so much. And we'll see you back at the studio. <laughs> Go on. Make sure you head on down now to the German Christmas markets as it closes on the 23rd December. Now, Sam, here is what me and Connor brought back for you from the oh, German Christmas markets. A little bauble to put on your tree. Oh, you should Decoration have. there. Oh, Lovely, right. Too what kind to me. So basically, welcome to my little cooking corner. Glad yep. you can join me. Basically, we're going to be... It's Christmas, guys, and we want to show you guys how to make more festive treats at home. I know, you haven't looked at your food and just thought, oh, I wish it was a little bit more Christmassy. Well, Sam's going to show us now how you can make your boring everyday household snacks a little more festive. So basically, Aaron, we we're going to be making some Grinchy grapes. It's basically <gasps> it. a fun little way to spruce up the fruit kebab. Mm. So here's one I made earlier. Oh, we have, I get it now with the little Grinch. So we have our grape, banana, strawberry and marshmallow. And basically, we're going to be making these. <gasps> so get your cocktail stick out. Be careful, they're sharp. And we're going to start off with our grape at the bottom here. Lovely. Yep. Then so guys, I'd warn you, these are actually can hazard for kids, so I wouldn't recommend it for them, as well as the cocktail sticks being very sharp. Exactly. Next up, we have our banana. Yep. Then our strawberry hat. I think strawberry's my favourite bit so far. Oh, same. And then our marshmallow. And it's just as simple as that. Oh, that's so, it's so quick and easy. You can just do it at home. And it's, exactly, that it took 30 seconds. Affordable. Literally. I know. Ooh, I'm going to have a, a bit try? of the grape, yeah. Go for it, treat it? yourself. Ooh. Okay, that's really nice. Mm. Oh, yeah, <laughs> really nice. It's so good. I love how quick and easy you can make it. But anyway, <laughs> now we have an amazing guest on the show. Now let's welcome Lydia Jackson. Hello, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, how are you guys doing? We're good. We're good so happy to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. Now, what do you have today with us? Um, so I've just bought sort of a few samples and things from my final collection I'm doing at uni. Um, sort of just the direction I'm going in in terms of colour and fabrics and techniques I'm using. So it's like an introduction to what's to come really. So where did you first get your ideas from then? Um, so I did a quite a lot of travelling last year and I sort of um, did a few minutes in Hong Kong and it's sort of just like taking inspiration from other cultures and that's sort of where my main inspiration comes from in terms of like the colour is probably the main thing um, and then the texture is sort of the next oh, wow. thing I concentrate wow. on, yeah. Incredible. What would you say is your inspiration behind your collection? Um, so your this current one is doing isolation of Tibet and I've sort of just taken out like, the religious section of areas and sort of like getting that raw beauty back sort of putting everything else behind and sort of bringing out that at the front of it all. Mm. What other places have you been to then? Um, so in the summer I did like Thailand and Bali and sort of like I all found they had in common was the religious side. That they're really sort of keen on, they have like a routine every day. So it was sort of interesting to see how they're so committed to that when they've got so much else going on around I them. You've like, you've seen that and you've taken it and you've incorporated it into your yeah, design. Yeah, that's a good, yeah. yeah. Where do you see yourself after your university degree? Like? Um, so I'm trying to get it to Graduate Fashion Week, um, and if not, sort of get talking to people that week in the industry, and sort of make a few contacts and links, and hopefully sort of set my own brand up one day. But I think to start with, I need to get some more experience within the fashion industry like sector. Oh, wow. What do you wow. think overall is your favourite piece? Um, or have you got it well to I show bought us? Me, yeah, I've got this. So I'm doing a jumpsuit. Um, it's kind of oversized. Oh, wow. um, I love the ruffles. Same. Yeah, sort of ruffles volume. Um, Wear them on a night out. <laughs> yeah. And then I sort of... Wanting to incorporate like print as well. Oh wow! Um, yeah, so they're like it's incredible. Yeah, I've sort of just developing these different ideas to go into one really. And that's your favourite one, just yeah, it's my sweet. favourite one. Yeah, definitely. Is it done now? Are you still um, in the middle? So this or? is just like the twelve fabric, so it's a practice run, and then so after Christmas I'll make the real thing in the real printed fabric. Oh wow! That's yeah. incredible. I mean, your concept is so unique and like eye popping. Like, what would you say are like your role models for this concept? Um, of yours? So I'm a big fan of Frida Kahlo, a mm. Mexican artist. I went to an exhibition at V&A in the summer, really interesting. Oh, so wow. I think she's sort of my main key of inspiration, yeah. Wow. Wow. Where do you think has been your favourite place to go where you found out your inspiration? Because um, I know you've been to lots of yeah, places. Yeah, I think Hong Kong in terms of like the architecture and the temples and things, probably my favourite place, yeah. Oh, wow. Is this you there then? Is this some of your... Um, yes, yeah, so this is when I just got back. Um, I made these, got me, I bought these trousers with me actually today. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Um, so yeah, that was me when I got back. So sort of all the fabrics I got from over there. Wow. Do yeah. you ever see yourself like like having models on the runway wearing your clothes? Yeah, I'd like to think so, yeah, definitely one day. I think it's quite a different style, so I don't think it'd be for everyone, but you sort of just have to do what it's you unique. like and then yeah. see what happens, yeah. 
Especially in today's world, we're like we're so diverse in like our tastes and like we're so yeah, expressive definitely. as a generation. Yeah. I mean, you're con I I'm just shook over your concept. <laughs> it's so amazing. Thank <laughs> so you. it's really clever as well. Thank you very much. It's yeah. really really unique, and I'd like. Honestly, I can't get over just how incredible it is and the colours and like if I if I walk past a shop I would love to buy it. Mm. But more onto you, what is your like future plan then? For um sure? so I'd like yeah, I'd like to sort of gain some experience with designers who sort of set up their own brand. Maybe it doesn't even have to be massive companies, it could be like independent stores that are sort of doing their own thing. Um sort of gain experience, knowledge and sort of like go into my own sort of area like that, yeah. Definitely. Wow. wow. I'm still shook over your concept. <laughs> <laughs> You're caught I'm, up on that, aren't you? I know, right? No, it is. Any it? chance you can have me on the runway? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, Sam, Sam would love it on that. <laughs> I say model, more like waddle, but <laughs> it's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll learn. I know, but anyway, thank you yeah, so no, thank much you for having me. It's really really we are so grateful for you yeah, to show you. us no your problem. unique work. Honestly, thank you so much, Lydia. And we're just so proud. Yeah, thank you. you for having me. Yeah, it's been good. Honestly. And we want to say thank you guys for watching us for this very special show. We couldn't have done it without you. And, uh, and now, to end the day, please welcome the, the Novus. Novus. We are the Novus. <laughs> Believe he can fly and 